Good morning. I am sorry that I have to conduct this lecture in English, so please pardon me. And I will try to take uh, you guys through as clearly as possible. So here we go. So thank you for inviting me to this program. Um, it is my honor to be here again in person this year. Yeah, and I'm very excited to be here and very honored to have the pleasure of bringing everyone through the concepts of ECTD. So I am a regional dossier publisher in, based in Singapore, and I do uh, mainly publishing of both ECTD and non-ECTD and dossiers for Asia Pacific. Together with me is supposed to be Arvin, who will join me online today, but uh, due to some personal emergencies, he will not be able to join me, and I will take um, the whole lecture solely. So some disclaimer that the materials provided in this slide deck are adapted from the ICH website and not intended for circulation, yet the material that is intended for circulation will be uploaded uh, after this uh, whole conference itself. So this is the agenda for today. I will bring all of you through the evolution of ECTD, current version, which is version 3.2.2, um, as well as the future version, version 4.0, what is the current implementation status and what are some of the discussions specific to South Korea. So ECTD specifications are developed by the ICHM2 Expert Working Group, a uh, short form for EWG, and is based on the content defined within CTD issued by M4 itself. And it has been implemented since in the 2000s, and many versions have been updated to address some of the change requests since uh, the current version, version 3, has been implemented. So the next one, ECTD 4.0, will be launched soon with technical pilots happening around the world right now. And it will focus on the development and implementation uh, next to address some of the major concerns from this current version itself. And M8, it's uh, working on ECTD version 4.0 through the HL7 process to ensure that the RPS message meets the ICH requirement. And yeah, it has been released in September 2014. So the goal of ECTD as a whole is to have one globally used electronic message to transmit any form of information between the applicant to the agency and based on internationally approved and standardized methods. So the current uh, place at which where we are is step four at the adoption of ICH harmonized guideline. Um, previously, there were some steps to take on a building of the technical document, um, getting ICH parties together to have some discussion on the draft regulations and the consultation. Yeah. Moving forward, the last step will be the actual implementation by the different agencies. So I will next move on to the current version of ECTD. And please note that the current version, I mean 3.2.2. Yeah. So this pyramid is not something that is new to most of you right here. We will just start off with the base of the pyramid itself. It has module 3 with the quality data, module 4 with the non-clinical studies, and module 5 being the clinical studies. And module 2 itself, that is one level up, is the summaries of module 3, 4, and 5. Modules 2 to 5 as a whole will be used across regions or across uh, the different states. For example, for EU, we call it different states. So this is common throughout the entire world if you adopt this ICH CTD structure, with the exception of module one, where it is either, either locally defined or regionally defined. So some of the specs that have been released include EU, that can be used across the whole EU states, United States, Canada, Japan, Australia, GCC, as well as Thailand. They have all defined their own module one ECTD specifications. So if I have talked about ECTD and you do not know what is ECTD yet, I will just bring you through the definition of electronic submissions. So if you look at the top one, all, e all ECTD submissions are electronic, but not all electronic submissions are ECTD. So we can think of it as electronic submissions being the whole branch, umbrella branch, with ECTD just being a subset of it. 
So electronic submission is a collection of electronic files, so any PDF files, any Microsoft Word files submitted to the agency with the intention of improving their ability to review. Instead of flipping through many multiple pages of a paper dossier, you can submit in electronic format. So if I say that electronic submission is the big branch, with ECTD being one of the subset. The other subset is called non-ECTD electronic submission, which I will refer to as NIS. So NIS is an electronic submission that follows the ICH CTD structure, but it uses this PDF table of contents. So PDF table of contents, you have one document that says on page one, you have Module 2.2, introduction. Module 2.3, drug substance, drug product, so on and so forth. So it doesn't have this XML backbone uh, as compared to ECTD. So ECTD, I said earlier, that is the other branch. It has this XML ba backbone to aid both in the navigation as well as to provide more details about the dossier. And the third point is that it also provides lifecycle management of the dossier within the XML itself. So next point on CTD versus ECTD, the E in front of CTD only stands for electronic, so don't be too intimidated by that. CTD actually describes what is included in the submission, but ECTD, it provides more rigid structure. So it has a standardized transfer medium format in a sense that there is XML backbone, so XML technology to manage information more efficiently as both navigation and life cycle management. And then it has uh, also helps in viewing as well. So reviewers only need um, your laptop yeah, or any, so uh, any sort of um, viewer, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, to just open up your documents. So just now I was referring to this big branch. Um, it has electronic formats. So there are three branches, like what I said earlier, it, ECTD, NIS, and volumized paper. So volumized paper is in the traditional format. It has only, uh, it creates PDF files. As you can see, it, it gets a bit big in size. 40 MB, 17 MB, 37 MB. Very big in size such that once you press print, it will just print out in a format that the reviewers can see it. So this is what we call volumized PDF. And to the center one, NIS, so in your traditional paper submission, you have these uh, tabs, we call it tabs, just so that the reviewers can flip to the page accurately. But when you submit in soft copy, uh, these tabs get translated into this table of contents where I say that all your individual files can be navigated from the table of contents. So that is for NIS. For NIS, uh, we also separate it into ASEAN, CTD, and ICHCTD, so ASEAN, because I am based in Singapore, uh, which is one of the ASEAN countries, so we also prepare ASEAN CTD for the 11 or 10 ASEAN countries. But specific to Korea, you will be more familiar with ICHCTD, so I will just focus on that. The same concept also applies for ICHCTD, where you have the table of contents, each for one modules and with the overall table of contents known as CTD-TOC. Yeah. This table of contents will then get translated, or the same concept is applied in ICH, uh, sorry, in ECTD format, where it is present as the index XML. So these are the three main branches that I will be referring to, but for the purpose of this training, I will just refer to the ECTD one. So to understand the basic elements of ECTD, it will be broken down to six structures. Number one is the directory structure on the top. So it has high level folder structure to just categorize all your documents according to the ICH CTD granularity. So putting module three quality documents in module three, drug substance, drug product, your references, lead refs and appendices and then putting your non-clinical studies in module four, clinical studies in module five, with your summaries in module two. Another um, element of ECTD is the leaf documents. So they are actually the PDF files. So if I say a leaf in ECTD is equivalent to one document in ECTD. 
and this is only specific to the current version. So current version allows uh, various formats. Number, you can see doc, dot, dot, that means Microsoft Word. It also allows XPT files or PDF files. The next concept is XML backbone. So it provides metadata as well as navigation tool, more information about the lifecycle management of the entire dossier within just one file itself. Next one on metadata. Metadata, the definition of it is actually data within data. So all the, the attributes that are found inside XML backbone actually allows um, the clear interpretation of metadata itself. Next one is on MD5 checksum. It is on a 32 character alphanumeric string of numbers and alphabets together. And it is used for integrity of checking the entire dossier. Last one is the style sheet. It supports the presentation and navigation around the dossier. So each of these elements, I will be diving into them. So don't worry if it gets too um, confusing at this moment. Okay, so moving from top down of the basic elements, uh, this is, we'll start off with the document granularity. So like what I said earlier, modules two to five will follow the M4, R4 guidance as well as M8 for ECTD. And then you should expect your entire dossier to be in this format for ECTD. All your modules present, those that you have documents inside, those that you do not have documents inside will not have a folder present. So if you are not submitting modules modules three and four, for example, then you should just be expecting modules one, two, and five. But the last three, if you see here, U2, index, and index MD5, these three actually comes as a package for all ECTD dossiers. So if you do not see any one of them, uh, something is wrong, yeah. So, yeah. This tree is always expected. Oh, sorry, if I can take you guys through the end, how you are expected to see an ECTD dossier also. Firstly, uh, it will be a company product identifier. So for the purpose of representing MSD, I have um, actually blanked out that one yeah, for confidentiality purpose. And then you'll be able to see the country that you're supporting. So this country, even like if you are supporting Australia submissions, AU will be defined in the module one specifications itself. And then your ECTD identifier. So this number, you can take it as your citizen identification number. So this is something that is unique to each and every one of you and will be staying with you for the entire lifetime. So in the concept of drugs, this product identifier is also the same. Uh, as long as it is submitted to the market, it will stay with the product for as long as the product is in the market until it is being withdrawn. And then the last number you are seeing is this 0000. zero, zero, zero. These four numbers actually represent the sequence number. So what I mean by sequence is that one sequence is one submission. And ECTD, you must always start with, or most countries in fact, start with 0000. zero, zero, zero. You cannot start from any other number that you like. For example, 0111, for example. And all subsequent submissions will follow like 0001, 0002, 0003, so on and so forth. So this is just a screenshot of um, the CTD granularity itself. And you can see that actually the granularity already defined it very clearly. So 2.3.S, it has to have either one by itself or you can actually submit uh, individual documents. 2S1, 23S1 all the way to 23S7. And then 23P, we have 23P1 to P8 uh, with appendices. Um, you can submit them as well. And then what I mean by metadata is actually for each and every 273 document, because 273 comes from the clinical, it often bears the indication of the product. So for example, if you have um, one product that has many, multi many indications, for, for example, cancer number one, cancer number two, cancer number three, you have to list them down as, um, for example, cancer one, cancer two, cancer three, with each indication bearing its own folder. So the folder will have the metadata, and the indication is part of this metadata. Likewise, for module three and module five as well, you will also have the metadata, so drug substance one, and then if you have another drug substance within the same product, you have to differentiate them, drug substance two, and then if you have the drug product, for example, capsule, you have to put it capsule as a drug product. 
an injectable, for example, is the next product. Likewise, the same concept from 273 is also applied to 535. So 535, the different indications will also have to be listed out and differentiated uh, by their own indication level. So we have talked about modules 2 to 5, which is um, used across the world. And then now we'll move on to module 1. So module 1 will have to be defined locally. And then it is very important to help to manage the information, especially those that are locally. Yeah. So these are the documents that Country RA will prepare and then will have to be defined by the DTD and it will be slotted in according to the DTD. So this screenshot is uh, from Australia. This is the old version, version 3.0. And then the next one is the newer version, version 3.1. So what happened in Australia a few years back is that the product information uh, so if you can see the green arrows here, once the labels are approved, uh, the previous version did not allow the approved uh, document to be placed within the module one itself. So that caused a lot of validation warnings and errors, a lot of confusion between the applicants as well as the TGA, so the agency itself. So what happened is that the DTD got revised to 3.1 such that the product information that is approved um, all these labels can be slotted in and can be viewed by all easily between both TGA and the applicant. So you can always see what is the latest version of your labels that is out in the market. The next concept is the leaf elements and the documents um, following this file naming convention. So all files will have to follow this naming convention that is defined within the ECT specifications and then um, Generally, we have to say that only letters and numbers are allowed. So anything that is special characters like your exclamation mark, your hex signed, these are not allowed in the file naming convention. And you have to use lower, lower case only, so no capital letters, because whatever that you publish out in capital letters will be automatically reverted to the lower case. And then if you use the separation of words, you have to use hyphen. This is because hyphen, just one, it takes up one character. Whereas if you use space in the coding, it comes out as percentage two zero. So that takes up three characters. So we always use hyphen only. So this uh, recommendation that companies should try to maintain their own file naming convention for authors and publishers. This is up to the individual companies to adopt, but generally we recommend a standardized format for all publishers to know, to use, as well as it provides a chance for agency to actually recognize that this is the style that MSD provides, for example, and this is something that MSD sticks to, for example. The next one is on XML backbone. So if I have talked about XML backbone that have confused you so far, I hope the next few minutes will help to enlighten you. So there are at least two XMLs in each ECTD sequence. So one is found at the index XML. It goes together with the MD5 checksum. So it's found at the bottom of this together. So like what I said earlier, if either of this U2 index or index MD5 is missing, something is wrong with your dossier. Okay. So the purpose of XML is to manage the metadata. So it puts put in any form of metadata inside, as well as to serve as a navigation tool. Okay, so this is a screenshot um, from one of the ECTD dossiers that I've published out with the confidential information being blanked out. So for example, let me take you through. This is the index XML, so you will not see your module one document inside because your module one documents will be found at the regional XML. So for example, it will be KR, for example, for Korea, KR XML, for example. But if you click onto this link, it will bring you to the KR XML. So this index XML shows modules two to five, and you can see that each document, which I will refer to as leaf, is present in the blue color uh, link here. Then the red color is present as the life cycle management. So I will uh, dive more into life cycle management later on. 
but you can see that for most of the original marketing application, that means new drug applications, all these leaves will appear as new because you are submitting the documents to the agency for the first time. The one in green color stands for the metadata. So for example, for a drug substance, metadata includes substance as well as the manufacturer. The same if you have multiple drug substance, you have um, another manufacturer or another substance itself, you have to lay them down in the next level. So that's all about index XML. There is one more that is called the regional XML. So for example, this is again uh, how the company identify a product. And then because this screenshot is taken from Thailand, so it is in the form of TH. E identifier, which is the, for example, the citizen identification number of that product, as well as the sequence number, which is the submission, which submission you are submitting. Inside module one, you are expected to see this, for example, for Thailand, will be for TH hyphen regional. This is the local and the, all the regional XML that is also present inside our ECTD dossier. So I like what I mentioned earlier, ECTD dossiers have two XMLs. One is the index XML, the other is this regional or local XML. So again, it serves as a backbone of module one, which is country specific, and then it has to be defined by the agency. It will comprise of module one, folders, the files, the granularity, envelope information as well. So what I mean by envelope information, it means um, what is the identification number, what is the INN name, what is the trade name, what is, who is the person to contact if MFDS has someone to reach out to, and then who, what submission are you submitting, which sequence, what kind, is it a new drug application, is it a variation, is it a CMC change, what kind of submission you are submitting. So this is a screenshot from the Australia module one envelope information. It actually sets out e-identifier, EBS client ID. This is how the agency actually remembers you, for example. The approved name, trade name, ARTG number is also something specific to Australia, but it is how the, the string of numbers that TGA recognizes that, that INN product as well. So metadata is again data about the data. And then it, for modules two to five, it is governed by ICHCTD. And then module one, it is governed by the regional DTD. This has to be present for all um, your ECTD submissions. The next one is about MD5 checksum. So just now I was referring to the three um, things that must come together as a package for your ECTD dossiers. So they include um, YouTube, index XML, index MD5. So this is the third one that I'm referring to, index MD5. So this is a unique mathematical sum of um, calculated by the publishing software for each and every single file that is present within your dossier. So what I mean is that this, if you put in 10 files, the publishing tool will generate a unique code based on these 10 files. If you suddenly take out one file, um, within your transfer of files and folders or when you are burning into a DVD, USB, for example, and then you lose one file, nine files, the unique code will be distorted. It will break up. So you will see that it will not be valid anymore. So what the authorities use this as is actually a form of lock and key mechanism to ensure the integrity of each and every file that you are supposed to submit. So any changes, any changes to the submission, even a minor one. So for example, I was saying if there are 10 files, you take out one file, you will mess up the whole MD5 checksum. Even if you go into one of those 10 files, you change the size, your font size of any word, you change the font color, you add in your company logo, for example, without telling a publisher, your MD5 checksum will be distorted. So this is how you ensure that by the time it leaves publishing, till the time your agency sees it, nobody touches the file. So it helps to ensure ent integrity and serves as a lock, lock and key mechanism. Some other concepts apart from these six basic concepts include life cycle management. So this is one of the more important features in ECTD because previously in like paper submission or NIS submission, which is the non-ECTD format, there is actually no 
way of managing your documents throughout the product's life cycle. So for example, if you have a particular literature reference in 5.4 that is applicable to many changes, many variations, in the past, before ECTD was launched, you have to submit this literature reference every single time that you submit a new dossier that is to the health authority. But with ECTD, you can actually reuse this document um, with uh, life cycle management. So by life cycle management, I have two levels. One is document level and one is submission level. And I will dive into that. So document level actually tells you about the relationship of the documents to one another. So for example, um, you can tell that there are these four operation attributes. One is new, one is replace, third is delete, the last one is append. So new, for example, it means that this file has no linkage to any of the previous files. Or this file is submitted for the first time in this product's lifecycle. Second one is replace. So replace, for example, is very commonly used in module one documents, especially your labeling documents. For example, if you have a site name change or you have a changes to where you want to place the product barcode, uh, your company logo, your company's name, the product's name, for example, you can make changes in your labels and then with that updated label, you replace the old version. So replacing means that this file replaces an old one, so it obsoletes the previous version. And then this obsolescence can actually take place uh, many sequences back. So if you are submitting the hundredth submission, which is you will end up as sequence number 0099, uh, you can still replace something that is submitted in 0001, for example. Third one is delete. That means if that leave or that file is no longer relevant to your submission anymore, you want to redraw that particular drug substance or that drug product from the market, you can apply the delete attribute to all the leaves and the files that is associated with something you want to withdraw. And then last one is a pen, but a pen is not commonly used in the current version of ECTD because it actually creates some form of complication to the actual, to the other, if the file has some other operators that is associated with it. So you will see that in my next section of the lecture where I talk about ECT 4.0, I will not talk about a pen anymore because it is getting removed from the next version. But a pen for the purpose of this current version is still around, just that it's not commonly used. Um, I can say that more than 90% of the times we do not see it at all. So these attributes actually describe the status of the particular document of within the dossier in association with anything that's submitted before. Okay, so this is a screenshot I took from Taiwan uh, ECTD specification, which I thought is a very good visual illustration. So if you can see, sorry to the folks on that side, I will use the screen on this side, I apologize. So if you can see that for the first submission, it starts with 0000, everything will be submitted as new in yellow. Then you have a new submission, maybe it could be because of a response to question from the health agency. You, you will submit a second, second submission, which will be 0001. This will be submitted in darker yellow, sorry. In module one, you replace the light yellow that is submitted in the very first submission. Module two, you also replace uh, the 0000. Uh, module 2 document. Okay. Then come some time, it can be a few years later, a few months later, you want to submit the third submission, which is 0002 um, in turquoise color. And then you have module 1 that is submitted as new, module 3 as replaced, and then module 5 as new again. Yeah. And then the fourth one in dark blue, module 1 as new and then uh, module four is replaced. So you will see that in your overall, um, this is the view that is present for both the applicant as well as the agency, the reviewers themselves. They will see that module one, they have turquoise and dark blue because dark blue is submitted as new and turquoise has replaced the dark yellow, which dark yellow has replaced the lighter yellow. 
So the agencies actually do not see uh, the dark yellow and light yellow anymore. But it is present in the historical view, it's just that when they want to review the current version, they will not see uh, the light yellow and the dark yellow. Module 2, because you have not submitted anything here, so module 2, you will only see the dark yellow, which has replaced the light yellow in the very first sequence. Likewise, for module 3, because um, the coins has replaced the light yellow, so the view that the agency sees is actually just the coins. Likewise, for module 4, where only dark blue is present, and module 5, because this is submitted as new, and your light yellow is submitted as new, you will see both versions here. So I hope this helps to better illustrate the concept of life cycle management that you can use across all your documents within that dossier. So this is not just a modular level. You can apply, you have to apply this to every single document that is associated, uh, that is present in that folder itself. So the concept of life cycle management, you have to follow it um, quite rigidly because there is this validation concept in ECTD dossiers. So ECTD, uh, we have to go through this validation where it ensures that all your files present in the dossier are valid. They do not contain any corrupted files. They follow the naming convention that the agency has set out and CTD has set out as well. And then it has to follow the correct um, life cycle attributes to avoid any validation errors. So for example, for Australia, um, module one document, the cover letter. So this cover letter is like your note to MFDS, the reviewer, for example. You have to submit it as new for every single submission. If you do not apply new to any of your submission, it will result in a validation error. So validation error can cause agency rejection. Okay, so this is very important that you have to bear in mind that you do not submit a dossier with validation error. Likewise, for Australia, TGA has set out this life cycle management tracking table. So what this is, is that for every product, it has to state out um, the original document, uh, the original dossier was submitted in like November 2022. And then your variation submitted in December 2022. Your CMC change submits in June 2023, for example. It has to state for everything that is up to date. You do not have to say anything in the future. If you do not replace your tracking table for Australia submissions, you will end up with a validation error as well. Another thing that Australia is quite unique on is the RMP document for pharmacovigilance. You have to replace it just so that it bears the latest version of the RMP. But you can see that if you do not replace, actually you just end up with a warning. You do not end up with an error. Warning is whereby the health agency says, okay, if you tell me that you want to submit like that, I will accept it. But then this has to be priorly communicated to the agency. So Australia actually allows some um, validation uh, uh, warnings to be submitted with their dossiers, just no errors. Uh, and so on and so forth. The module one specs will have to define by the agency, by MFDS itself. And then this will have to be followed through by all the applicants. So the next, we have been talking about document level kind of um, life cycle management. But now we'll move on to the next concept, which is actually submission level type of um, life cycle management. So like what I was saying earlier, one sequence in each ECTD um, submission is actually starting with this four digit number. Typically, it starts with 0000, but there are some agencies that start with 0001, for example. Yeah. So it has to be defined locally and it has to follow through. So then there is an, another concept that is on related sequence. So related sequence tells you the relationship of your current sequence to anything that has been submitted in the past. So anything that submitted before. So a group of sequences within the ease submission associated with a particular regulatory activity to allow for easier evaluation. So if this gets a bit complicated, I have a visual illustration to elaborate more later on. So for example, your very first uh, new drug application you submit in 0000, uh, it is related to itself. Why? Because 
there is nothing submitted before that. So it has to relate to itself. The relationship of that sequence is nobody but itself. Yeah. This is applicable for new drug um, applications, like NCE is short. And then the sequence description, you will say as a initial, for example. Then maybe some time later, the agency comes back to you and say, uh, I think you do not provide enough literature reference. Can we have more, for example? Then you submit the next sequence, 0001, which because it is a question that you are replying to the agency, so you put the related sequence as 0000. You relate back to the first sequence. Why? Because you are providing supplementary information that answers the response to question by the agency. Likewise, if this current uh, response to agency does not adequately um, solve the, the agency's questions, then you submit one more uh, response to question. Sequence two, relate back to itself again because it is still providing more supplementary information, still responding to the agency's question. Then the fourth one, maybe sometime later, it can be a few years later or a few months later, you submit the fourth sequence, 0003, relating back to itself. Why? It's because uh, you want to submit a new vari major variation in a form of new dosage form. So for example, if you only have tablet, you want to have like um, injectable, you have to submit um, it as a new, in, in a sense that is a new submission. So major variation and relating back to itself. And then if, there are no questions from the major variation. You submit the fifth one, sequence four, relating back to itself. It can be anything. These are just some examples with sequence uh, five being the sixth submission, still relating back to itself. These are just some examples that if you do not have to relate back to any form of any previously submitted sequences, you just put the related sequence back to itself. Yeah. Itself, I mean that if you submit sequence five, you put sequence five as the related sequence. So just now I was mentioning the concept of validation um, errors or validation findings, in fact. So this one, it has to be defined by locally, by the own agency. And then there are just three types of validation findings that most of the companies or most of the tools that are available in the market uh, adhere to. So number one is error. So this means critical finding. This can be that uh, mandatory documents are not submitted or you are not complying with the envelope information, then this cannot be submitted. So at the point of um, receipt by MFDS or the agency, for example, they will run through this technical validation. If they see that you fall under this validation error, they will outright tell you, no, you cannot submit. Uh, please take your dossier back. They will not even start to see your PDF content, anything at all. They will just tell you, um, go back. Yeah. The next one is validation warning. So these validation warnings, right? we try to address them as much as possible. We try to submit without any warning. But like what I said earlier, for example, for Australia, if you have previously told TGA that you are submitting with a warning, then sometimes they will just allow you to submit it. But then if you have like um, a lot, a lot of warnings that is in an unreasonable number, then again, the agency will just tell you, uh, go back and fix your dossier. You submit it when you are ready. The next one is information or low level. This one, usually we, um, the health agencies will not refer to it. So if your validation only comes up with many, many information or low levels, they will just tell you, okay, okay, we can accept it. Yeah. Okay, so the benefits of current version of ECTD actually is uh, multiple four. So these are just some examples. It promotes uh, good review practices. So because you do not need to have um, the all kind of submission with paper, it also allows life cycle management to be adopted. So it has um, improved uh, navigation as well as management of your information. Next one is with the products lifecycle management capabilities. Just think about not having to submit one document many, many, many times. Yeah, you just submit once and then you forget all about it. Yeah. Uh, so this actually is one of the advantage of ECTD. The next one is that 
sorry if it comes out as a little dark or, or not be able to see very clearly, but it actually says facilitate simultaneous global submissions. So for example, what I mean is that um, if you have something that is already submitted in the United States, you can take their dossier uh, and then shift it locally. And then you just, um, because it's the same kind of metadata, same kind of documents that has to be submitted, you can actually use their dossier and just change some of the XML that is applicable for local context. It also helps to decrease uh, rejections or RTQs with quality dossier. Why? Because if there is any form of documents that you want the agency to refer to that has been submitted in the past, you can just make advantage, use the lifecycle management. And then as associated with this good review practices, uh, you actually allow faster approvals and earlier product launch. Yeah, so this is why some companies really want to push for uh, ECTD implementation so that you can have your products earlier on the market. Okay, so just one thing to note that once you have started on ECTD, there is no turning back. So once ECTD, always ECTD for as long as the product is in the market. Until the day you want to redraw the product, you have to stick to ECTD. You have to follow through the rigid structure, the rigid format, the specifications, how tight it is, you just have to follow through. Okay, this is some of the implementation status around the globe. Um, with very recent one, we have in just last year, China and Taiwan. Taiwan actually released uh, both their specs and they allow voluntary submission. So what's just something to note is that those in black have to be submitted mandatory, red voluntary, and blue is to be implemented soon, including uh, Singapore, <laughs> where I come from. Yeah. So like what I say, 2018 TGA has implemented it. They have also revised their module one several times. Um, Thailand FDA, uh, they only mandate it for new drug entities. The rest are still in ASEAN CTD format. And specific to home is Korea. Um, there was a guidance released in 2016. This is still found on the ICH website, but the move towards uh, true adoption of ECTD, I believe it will come in very, very soon. So some of the very mature markets include US, Japan, and Europe, they are already very, very mature in their ECTD um, style and submission. So I think this is my last slide for the current version of 3.2 uh, or ECTD version 3.2.2. Uh, and then I'll move on to ECTD version 4.0. So this, uh, just some uh, disclaimer, is that it is not yet um, mandated throughout the world, the world still is running some technical pilots on the next version of ECTD. So again, if you remember um, earlier, I was talking about the six basic elements of 3.2.2. The same concept is also applied here for ECTD version 4.0. So we have the files and folders, controlled vocabularies, XML, context of use, document of reviews, and forward compatibility. So I'll just dive into that. Number one, uh, files and folders. Once you submit something, there will be this coding that is available. It will be available within the ECTD 4.0 XML message. And then it actually says where it is supposed to sit inside um, the granularity itself. The next one is controlled vocabulary. Very interesting concept. So this uh, specifies out the exact terms that agencies want to see or yourself as applicants want to see as well. So it allows uh, interoperability. So what I mean is that if we are referring to something, this is the code that we have to stick to. Yeah, I will dive into that later on as well. XML, not very new concept, but the difference between the previous version of ECTD and the next version is that previous one, there are two XMLs. One is the index XML, one is the regional XML. But in ECTD 4.0, there will be this merged XML message. So only one XML will be present. Context of use actually defines the relationship between the table of contents heading and the actual documents. So something more of like a navigation tool as well. And then it also provides um, more information about that document that you are submitting. Document we use again, very, very interesting concept. So I will dive into that because this can be used 
not just in the current version of ECTD, but the, the difference is that current version, you don't change across applications, but the next version, you can change across applications. So I will dive into that later. Next one is forward compatibility. So it means that if you have something in the current version of ECTD and you want to move to the next version, you don't have to worry about resubmitting all the documents again. There will be this coding that is present known as the forward compatibility such that you can refer back to documents that has been submitted in version 3.2.2. So this is how you can um, somewhat envision the future concept of ECTD. The very, very top level is the application and then it has two submissions, two uh, branches as the submissions, with each branches actually referring to your submission unit. Yeah. So instead of one submission, in the current version, you do not see the application level as yet as a combined one, but in the next version, you will be able to see that. Also, it allows opportunity for two-way communication such that if you are the applicant from the pharma company, you want to submit this particular message, it undergoes ECDD 4.0 coding such that uh, it reads it to allow the regulator to see the exact same view as you. So it also op opens up the opportunity that the regulator responds to you in a form of a sequence instead, so that everything is captured within that application instead of the traditional way of agency giving you questions in a form of emails or any other format. Okay, so this is a new concept of controlled vocabulary. So what I was referring to just now, if you see on the left side, green color, last time when you are talking about a new drug application, you use various terms. You use like new drug application, NDA, you use new chemical entity, NCE, you also use OMA, original marketing application. So in the next version of ECTD, it just means that every term that is used between you and the agency will be controlled. So you're talking about the same thing. The one on the right side, animal species, for example, right now we can talk about, if you're talking about animal species, we talk about rodent, we talk about mice, we talk about mouse, we talk about rat. Yeah, but in the next version, we use a very defined term that we say, if we are sticking to red, we will use red for everything that is in the product's life cycle, everything that is in the application. So the controlled vocabulary, they can be ICH defined, they can be HL7 defined, they can be defined locally, they can be defined within the company, just so that once we talk about a species, we know that we are talking about the same thing. So you do not leave room for doubt. You do not leave room for other forms of interpretation. So new vocabulary, new controlled vocabulary in ECT 4.0 also uh, provides category event. So it means that it provides more information about the submission unit. There are some document types. We replace the file tag valid values. There's also this group, uh, study group order where you provide a mechanism to order the studies um, such that it is in the specific style. And then um, as applicants, you can actually send in a defined list of items. For example, you want, um, if you have many manufacturers, you want company one to stick to it, to this uh, manufacturer, you want company two to be stick to another set of um, controlled vocabulary. There's also a new concept, there is this keyword and keyword definition, so it helps to organize um, information within the table of contents itself, it allows for the controlled uh, vocabularies to be captured, and again, you can send in your defined list um, by yourself as applicants. Um, so this is quite interesting, there is this update possible. So this is actually a screenshot taken from um, MSD's uh, interface just that the confidential information have been blanked out. So for example, in the module 3, 3.2, in fact, with the body of data, there is actually a multiple drug substance and manufacturer that are present. So if you can see here, the top one it is being grayed out because uh, this is obsolete. So we do not want uh, agencies to refer to this anymore. So because of that, we submitted a new outline. We submitted something that has 
new drug substance and new manufacturer combination. So this creates another outline that is in black, not the one that is grey. So the same thing applies for 3.2. We want to remove these two lines in grey. So we ask, uh, we just ap apply the delete attribute to ask agencies to not see it anymore. We want to update the metadata. As a result, we had to submit a new outline with a new metadata to the agency. But in the next version of ECTD, you can actually update. So for example, the one on the left, uh, the manufacturer is spelled as ACE, A-C-E. But then you realize, hey, actually I submitted wrongly. I want to update the manufacturer. You can actually update it uh, such that it becomes A-C-M-E in your next sequence. So you do not have to submit a whole new outline together. You can update it uh, together with your documents that are submitted. Next one is this con concept of use. It's a placement of document within the document um, TOC or the section itself. So this is interesting in a sense that you see here COU1A, uh, for example, it has uh, 32S2 manufacturer with name 1 and manufacturer 1. So this is the package, the combination that you want C O U A to B. Then, for example, if you have your product in another that is done by another manufacturer elsewhere in the world, you can create C O U B where it has 32S2 manufacturer name one, manufacturer two. In this next version of ECTD, instead of two outlines that is in the current version, the next one you actually see it as a combined effect. So Drug substance, substance one, name one, but you will see two individual manufacturers underneath the folder, not as a separate outline, as opposed to the current version. And then uh, the next concept in ECT 4.0, so just now I mentioned that in current version, there are four attributes, new, replace, delete, append, but in next version, we are actually uh, sticking to three. So new, the concept is still the same, we just call it active, replace, the concept is the same as well, but I will dive into this later on, give me a while, is that you can replace it with many documents. The third one, delete, um, the concept is the same, the term just changes, it's going to be suspend and append it will be removed. So just now I say that 90% of the times we do not use a pen. That's why in the next version, we are removing it entirely. Yeah. So the concept of replace is very interesting such that the previous version, you have to replace one is to one. But in the next version, you can replace many to one, one to many, or just change the whole thing altogether. So what I mean is that many to one, uh, in your current sequence, for example, you have one, two, three, but then in your next uh, sequence, you have a consolidated document. You have a document that addresses all these three, and you think, oh, well, let's just one shot uh, replace it. Then you just create one document, you replace all three at the same time. Next example is replace one to many. So current version, I said one is to one replacement, right? So the next one, it will be one document. You can replace by three documents, in fact. So your leaf outlines will suddenly from one, you just replace it by three. And then the last example is the change in concept group. That means you, that is related to the context of use earlier. You want to change the manufacturer, the name altogether. You just create one whole new context of use combination. Next concept is this document reuse. Again, very interesting concept is such that once the document is being submitted, um, in ECTD4 format, right? It will be given this um, UID or UUID or just object ID. So what it means is that there will be this, again, this um, identification number that is tied to the document. So once you submit the document, it has a number tied to it. Then, and next time you want to re reuse the document again, you can just refer to this ID alone. But the concept is that you can actually uh, use it across the submission unit. That means across various sequences. You also can do it across regulatory activities within application. That means if you have a NCE 
today, major variation tomorrow, minor variation next week, you can actually use this document reuse concept. Next one, very interesting, is that there is this across applications. So for example, if you have um, three products in your company as an applicant, you have um, the first one being product one, the first one, second one being product one and two, third one being products one, two, and three, for example. You just need to submit document for one application, and then the next two, the next two um, drugs can make use of this um, ID that is present in the first one. So you don't even need to submit the document at all in the next two. And then you allow uh, reuse of metadata, including the lifecycle operators, the document type, the format, document style, whatever, you can reuse it. So how it is going to be like as a visual illustration in the future is that your very first submission, for example, FR1762, you have the documents provided. And this is because you still need to provide it for the first time. Second time, if you have across applications, that means this one, across different applications, you have FR1011, then you don't even need to submit the documents at all here. You don't even need to see, uh, you don't even have the module one or like module two, module three at all. Even for the next application, FR0345, you don't even need to submit it again because it has all been submitted first time, and that's it. So just now I talked about um, updating of the metadata, right? When you change the context of use, then the same feature is also applied for document reuse such that you can change the document title as well. For example, if you realize that you in your first submission, you put a spelling error. This is manufact, process, and controls. Then after you submit, you think, ah, yeah, change. I, I submitted the wrong uh, document title. So you want to submit it again. So you put it such that there is manufacturing, process, and controls when you reuse the document. You can update it at the same time. Um, this is something I mentioned earlier. There is this merge XML concept. So instead of having two XMLs in your current version, this is your index XML. This is the regional XML. Then the next version, there will just be this one XML concept, this submission submissionunit.xml. So just one that will contain modules one to five all together. So the road ahead in terms of conversion from current version of ECTD to version 4.0 is such that um, there is this new terminology that is um, co forward compatibility. This was only introduced in like September of this year, so just two months back, because the ECT version 4.0 guidance was just updated in September to one, version 1.5. It removes the old message from last year, uh, version 1.4, it says, transition mapping message that is an removed, it becomes this version 1.5 forward compatibility. So what I mean is that it allows the presentation of both current version of ECTD and the next version of ECTD to be in the same navigation and the same view at the same time. It also allows you to refer back to your 322 content so you do not need to pull in all your documents from the 3 version 3.2.2 content to version 4.0, you can still refer back. And then um, the thing to note is that once you replace the version 3.2.2 content, you actually have to follow the version 4.0 context groups. So what I mean is that your concept, context of use, your controlled vocabulary, your keyword and keyword definition, all this will have to follow version 4.0 message. And submitting of uh, version 4.0 content with um, leveraging 322 content, you have to use the matching uh, keywords and the values itself. So some advantages of ECTD 4.0, uh, again, it is usage of context groups. Um, use the context of use um, function to allow the documents to be grouped together. Next, you have the revised lifecycle operators to ensure clear lifecycle management. It removes any doubt for the lifecycle attributes to be operated. So sometimes in the current version, we still think, oh, yeah, should we use a pen, should we not? Uh, should we try? But no, in the next version, we remove any room of doubt. Document reuse, again, is this uh, concept of this UUID. 
um, ID tied to the document so that you can reuse it anytime across sequences, across applications, across wherever you want. Once it has UUID associated with it, you are free to reuse it anytime for as long the product is in the market. And then the next one is the improved global harmonization of the format. There is this new XML schema, so we do not have to separate XML anymore. Um, and then this merge concept is harmonized um, globally as well. So I've talked about the changes that is happening between um, the current version and the new version, but what doesn't change in fact, right? Is the folders and files naming convention. Again, lower case only, no capital letters. Um, and all the file names should be unique within one folder. So if you have 10 files uh, in one folder, you have to ensure that the 10 files have different names. Max allowable character is still 64, it doesn't change. Uh, your folder hierarchy of modules two to five doesn't change as well. The concept of checksum, checksum where it is a lock and key mechanism doesn't change, but the terminology change. Next time, it is going to be this SHA-256 algorithm uh, in a form of 8, 4, 4, 4, 12 alphanumeric numbers instead of one string of 32 one shot. But this is still 32, just that it's separated by the hyphen. Compressed archive, so uh, you can make use of .zip and .dot. Uh, ta GZ. This is actually part of what publishing actually use to make sure that the content um, that is actually in various languages gets converted to English. So this is something interesting that can be applicable to local ground such that any documents that is titled in Korean can be changed. So this is something that we have seen for Thailand submissions and uh, can be ap applied for Korea as well. So future concept, how it will look like is the submission unit being at the top. Then you have the priority number, the context of use have to be defined out before you have your keywords and then your sequence number and the, all the applications and documents being present underneath the various folders that, are, that need to be present. This is the implementation status around the world. Right now, we, can, we know that actually Japan has completed their technical pilot. Uh, last year, they are moving on to actually submitting uh, ECTD version 4.0. And then US is actually having the technical pilot uh, in second half of this year, so around this period. And then uh, they plan to be voluntary next year with mandated submissions from 2026 onwards. So actually most of the countries are going to have mandated from 2026 and in fact, we are already at the end of 2022. 2023 is coming already, so we already have like three years left to, for, for the actual implementation. Okay, so something um, suggested for South Korea, I think uh, in terms of the full successful implementation, first we have to start off with finalization of the module one specifications and knowledge transfer. So such events are actually good so that uh, the industry and the applicants can start to be familiar with the concept of ECTD because it is really coming sooner than, than we think. Yeah. Next one is to, from our perspective as MSD, to, to start off ECTD pilot with a few companies to ensure that there is representation from both the larger MNCs and the smaller SMEs, that means the small to medium enterprise companies as well. Then expansion of pilot to more submission types. So you allow all the variation, the changes to come in and more companies. Again, with representation from the small companies to the large companies. And then you can release the industry guidance, the implementation date and setting out a pathway where ECTD version 4.0 is going to be implemented. So this is my last slide with some uh, summary and recommendations is that ECTD in uh, implementation has to think about a phased approach because I believe that all the products that is submitted in that is active in the Korean market right now are still not actively using ECTD version 3.2.2 yet so we still have to uh, have a plan to convert existing applications to ECTD style. Next one, the ECTD guidelines will have to be very clear to prevent any form of miscommunication. And these guidelines will have to be reviewed periodically by both the industry and the agency so that both sides can be heard. Next one on ECTD 
uh, implementation, the success is very dependent on a co collaborative effort between the agency and the industry. And um, we still do not recommend submitting baseline because this is very, very labor intensive and it involves a lot of work just to resubmit all the documents again. So last point is that the next version of ECTD 4.0 will arrive globally, will, arrive, uh, be, will be implemented globally sooner than we think. So we just have to be prepared for the next wave of electronic submissions altogether. So with that, uh, this is my concluding slide. Uh, if there are any questions that cannot be addressed today itself, this is my email address. You can reach me or Avin anytime. We are publishers uh, by training. We should be able to address your questions. Yeah, so thank you.